Uh, Professor, it's truly a pleasure to have you here today. Uh, you're a truly distinguished cryptographer, mathematician, computer scientist, a professor at MIT, a uh, founder of Algorand and co-creator, or I guess co-discoverer perhaps is the better way of phrasing it, of zero knowledge proofs. Welcome to Real Vision. Thank you very much. Good morning, Ash, to you and uh, to your audience. It's a pleasure to be with you. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, and I know this is going to embarrass you a little bit, uh, but for uh, our friends who are on the finance and economics side, I want to tell a little bit about your background. Uh, you're a National Academy of Sciences and National Academy of Engineering member, a winner of the Godel Prize, the RSA Award for Excellence in Mathematics, and you've uh, won the Turing Prize, often referred to as the Nobel Prize of Computing uh, with Professor Shafiq Goldwasser, a truly distinguished academic career in addition to the things we're going to talk about here today. You are too kind. <laughs> so, Professor, let's talk a little bit about your journey into the Bitcoin space, which I think is one of the most interesting stories. You've spoken about how you succumbed to Bitcoin uh, and how you locked yourself in your office for a few months with your MIT colleague, uh, Professor Nikolai Zeldovich, uh, thinking, this is just too good to be true. This Bitcoin algorithm, too good to be true. We're going to try to break it. Well, um, yes. So first of all, um, I was uh, in my ivory tower um, mood, right? So um, I try not to be distracted by too many things. But at this point, the Bitcoin popped up here and there. Everybody was talking about. So finally, I succumbed, as you said, <laughs> and asked my student, OK, explain to me Bitcoin. And I was... Um, Immediately, two things struck to my mind. First, I loved the vision, the idea, the whole thing. It really was fascinating. But the second thing is, it looks a bit too uh, complicated, the machine. Maybe not uh, as elegant a solution as possible. So, as you said, uh, I locked myself up and say, well, criticizing is easy. Doing things is always harder. What I would do? And so... It takes me a few months, and then uh, finally I re-emerge with an initial design. And then we're, I started discussing with Nikolai, and then Nikolai says, you know, well, this is all theory. Do you mind if we test it? Now, uh, Nikolai is uh, <laughs> the best <laughs> system engineer that you can imagine. And uh, I said, why, why should I mind it? No, let's test it. So we rented some uh, 1,000 servers, a big service from Amazon to simulate all kinds of traffic. And um, after a while, my oh my, somehow the experiment seemed to confirm the theory. Mm. So then at that point, it says, oh, you know what? There is a technology, there is an experiment, the technology is tested. Well, how about now we uh, start a company? That was uh, really the, the, uh, the idea. Because I must say, as a cryptographer, I always feel frustrated with how late our ideas and innovation come to the marketplace. This time I decided you know, I throw my hat in the arena, whatever happens, happens. I'm, uh, I'm going to do it rather than waiting for somebody else to do it. So, and that brings us actually to Algorand, which is, a, it's, you literally started this at your dining room table. Tell us a little bit about your thought process, how you worked into that. It's a truly novel uh, structure, a truly novel blockchain. Give us a little bit of a background for first, what you saw the need was and why you thought this is something that really needs to exist? Well, I must uh, say that you know, uh, after I, I saw um, the, the design of Bitcoin and already the, uh, the reaction that we discussed uh, before, I also learned about uh, the Buterin uh, blockchain trilemma that uh, states uh, that no blockchain can be simultaneously decentralized, secure, and scalable. And so um, whenever I find something, uh, something is claimed impossible, nothing excites my imagination more than impossibilities. Because I want to share with you and your audience uh, two fundamental truths. One is that there are impossible things in life, which, by the way, is what gives life depth and meaningfulness. But the second thing, which is also good news, is that the impossible things are much fewer than we think they are, okay? So I thought that, uh, let's see what is so hard about it. And um, and somehow if I found you know, a perfect uh, setting for uh, all my recent studies. I, uh, I'm i a cryptographer in indeed. I spent you know, um, many years doing that. My first uh, 
PhD thesis that I granted was uh, in distributed computation and Byzantine agreement. And um, my latest team here, as I was conducting research on uh, mechanism design, which is a branch of economics that deals with mechanics and uh, the architecture of incentives. Professor, if you wouldn't mind, if you could tell the audience, for people who don't know what the formal academic definition of Byzantine fault tolerance is and why that's so important uh, in these distributed cryptographic systems. Terrific. You know, what the, the perhaps uh, is um, um, right now, what is uh, very easy is uh, to spread communication, right? So we live through this revolution that all of a sudden, you know, um, not only our friends, we can reach everybody um, um, with a, a viral message. But there is only one problem. When I receive a message, I have no idea if you receive it too. So communication and messaging is easy. Common knowledge to realize what we really, both you know, I know that you know, and you know that I know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that common knowledge is very actually very hard. So Byzantine agreement is essentially a communication protocol. A bunch of people have uh, some values in their head, say is raining or is snowing or, uh, or whatever the value is, or a numerical value. And what do we want to do is that we talk, 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 and at the end of a conversation, two properties are uh, um, uh, occur. One, everybody agrees, on the same value. And by the way, if just in case everybody started with the same value, not only we agree on a common value, but we agree on the very value that everybody started with, right? So that is essentially, um, um, it takes a while to convince ourselves that that's what uh, we need. By the way, in blockchain, is very, very important to know what the next block really is to achieve agreement on what the next block is. And in Bitcoin, as a very um, uh, ad hoc mechanism to reach a, a, a agreement on a common block. And in Algorand, instead, we do it in a totally different way. We reach a Byzantine agreement on the block, and therefore our chain never forks, because the way essentially Bitcoin works is that I propose a block. If you agree on my block, then you append your block to mine, somebody else will append a block to yours, it's voting. I agree on, on Hash's block, and by the way, I also agree on Silvio's block and all the blocks that precedes. So after you see that a block has been uh, agreed to, voted upon a, a vote of confidence by more and more block, it becomes more and more and more probable that this is actually, this block is here to stay, and we are not going to change our mind. On it. In other words, we have agreed on it. In Algorand, we take a different approach. We agree by doing a Byzantine agreement protocol on each block, and therefore we never change our mind and our chain never forks. And so what the Byzantine agreement is the strongest notion of agreement in presence of bad people. And what can these bad people do? They can tell you one thing and me something else altogether. So they can lie, they can cheat, they can do anything. But if somehow the majority of the participants are honest, then, then there is uh, all the good people at the end of the conversation, they agree on a single block, on a single value, and, uh, and, uh, and, and that is really a very, very robust property, exactly what was needed in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in blockchain. Unfortunately, Byzantine agreement, which was a notion proposal in the 1970s, it was also very robust, but very slow to achieve. So, so much so, the defines law, the maximum number of any practical application requiring Byzantine agreement allowed 12 participants. 12, you know, in an internet protocol with possibly billions of participants, it, it doesn't even make sense. So we have to reinvent at Algorand a totally new approach to a Byzantine agreement that guarantees on the nose the original definition and is so fast that we can achieve it actually in, in, a, in a second or two, even though there are a fantastic number of participants. 
Yeah, and that's what's so fascinating. One of the things that we try to do here at Real Vision is to translate uh, the computer science into the practical real world applications. Uh, for people who have been following uh, Bitcoin, for example, uh, they know that uh, very often you have to wait for two or three block confirmations to be certain that you have transaction finality. Uh, but what's so interesting about this settlement finality, transaction finality, the idea being that you know with a very high degree of certainty that the transaction isn't going to change in the future. And Algorand, the algorithm, uh, is designed to do this with a single block. Yes, because, because once a, a payment made to you appears in the new block, you say, oh, EP, finally I've been paid. Well, not quite, because if the chain can fork, and uh, it may be that the block in which you're what happens when the chain forks, the shorter branch of the chain eventually dies, and possibly your block may disappear with it. So before considering yourself paid, mm. don't just, uh, what you don't want to see your payment made to you appear in the latest block. You want to make sure that a second, a third, a tenth block are added to your block so that it becomes more and more probable that the block in which it is written, you have been paid, is going to stay in the chain forever. In Algorand, essentially, as soon as a block appears, you have a guarantee that it's going to stay on chain forever. So you can ship the goods right away as soon as you get paid with in Algorand. In, uh, the, the, the moment in which a payment made to you in Algorand appears, you can ship the goods you have been paid. Yeah. So, Professor, I'm a, a former English major, so you're going to have to bear with me uh, with my rather limited math skills. Uh, but I was watching an academic lecture of yours uh, last night where you were talking about uh, the forking infrequency. Uh, and I heard you reference something like when you well, someone, I believe, asked uh, or, or you were answering the question yourself, how infrequent is infrequent? Uh, and you said <laughs> 10 to the minus 18, which is the number of seconds that have elapsed since the beginning of the universe. Do I have that about right? You have it that right. So when uh, when uh, I say uh, colloquially, essentially in Algorand uh, there are no forks, this is a little bit of a stretch of the truth. There is a, a, a small probability that an Algorand can fork, um, and, but this probability, I decided when we wanted, we were trying to figure out how this is decision that I made unilaterally, how small this should be this probability. I said, hey, we have to convince that this is small enough. I decided I have an idea. 10 to the minus 18. So one divided 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, uh, 18 times. And he says, what is magic about this number? It, as you said, is the number of, of seconds from Big Bang until now. <laughs> In other words, if uh, we produce one block a second, which is a very good clip, it's going to take the age of the universe before we can see a fork in algorithm. And at that point, I decided maybe this is good enough, at least for me and certainly possibly for my a few descent, a few generations after that. Hey, if you like this clip, be sure to check out the full interview and more only on realvision.com forward slash crypto. It's 100% free. Sign up now.